All right. Hi, everyone. We're here with these two beautiful ladies. You've met Patra. She is the founder of NHV. And we have Jackie, who's one of our dear pet parents. She's a pet mother to Robbie, one of our NHV, extended NHV family members. And there's little Chaya also sitting and pouting, giving us the side <laughs> eye right now. She's kind of a little miffed that we have uh, Robbie onto her territory right now. But Robbie often visits us. He lives cl uh, close to us in Vancouver and he is uh, taking some of our supplements. I'm not going to continue more because I'm going to let Patra and Jackie do the rest. So, Patra. Hi, everyone. Super to be back again. Um, thank you for joining us. As Jade said, this is Jackie, who is one of our pet parents here. And uh, we've got Robbie, who is this wonderful little Scottish terrier. So, um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Jackie for joining us and uh, having a little chat about Robbie and what his health is and stuff like that. So, Jackie, tell us a little bit about Robbie. How old is he? And what his breed is. I mean, everybody looking here will know that he's a little sweet <laughs> Scotty, but... <laughs> Although a lot of people ask me if he's a schnauzer. Oh! Strangely. But he's, he's a Scotty. Of, it's because of the beard, but he's definitely a Scottish terrier. Um, we lived in Scotland for a few years, so when we were choosing a dog, we wanted a Scottish dog, and we wanted a little dog with a lot of personality. And we definitely got that with Robbie. <laughs> He's very stubborn. He likes to go, when we go for walks, if we go one way, he likes to go the other way. But that's what we love about him. He's 12 years old, so he's getting a bit slower. And um, he's got a few little health issues, as you know. Yes. But other than that, he's pretty, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's a really good dog. Yeah. And all Scottish Terriers do have this trait of being terribly stubborn, right? Yeah, they do. I think I was yeah. reading on up on Scottish Terriers and they say, you know, they're the dogs that will absolutely not take any command you want right and they want yeah. left. And I know. Well, that's what's so nice about him because he's got his little personality. He's got the Scottish personality yeah, he of being a strong decider. <laughs> Is that why Ty and um, Robbie get along? <laughs> I don't know because Chaya has got her own person. Yes. <laughs> well, Chaya is today sporting this lovely little tweed. We thought we'd make her look a bit Scottish yes. as well. <laughs> Actually, Robbie has a Harris tweed coat too. <laughs> <laughs> they could be twinning right now. Yeah, they could be. So what would you say um, Robbie's temperament is like? Um, he's really friendly with people like very loving very friendly quite aloof like he doesn't run up and greet you when you walk in the door he'll kind of just sort of you have to go and greet him but he's um but he's yes yeah, definitely got that sort of royalty aura about him but he is very gentle very loving he's very routine based he loves to he knows his like breakfast time lunch time walk time with other dogs, he does have a bit of an attitude, like he'll walk past him and give them, <laughs> the <side growl. laughs> give them a little bit of a growl and then carry on walking, just ignore them. But yeah, no, I highly recommend Scottish Terriers. And how's he with kids and dogs, Jack? Um, he's very, well, other dogs, as I say, he can be. Well, not, I said cats, not yeah, dogs. Ca oh, cats, definitely, I uh, know. <laughs> well, we've had a couple of near incidences with cats. But maybe just because he hasn't been bought. I think if dogs are introduced to cats when they're young, yes. then they'll be okay. Well, he never has been. So, But, um, but kids, he's fabulous with kids. Yeah, we've known lots of kids from little and he's fine. Fantastic. So, Jackie, just not too long ago, you had a bit of a health scare with Robbie and you ended up at the emergency vet clinic here in Vancouver, spending most of your night there with poor Robbie. I'm sure you were stressed out beyond your mind. Yes. Um, do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit about what happened there? And well, it started out, we went out and we came back and he had... Um, he had a very bad upset tummy 
and, and he was being sick. And then it got worse and worse and he was sort of foaming, sick with mostly foam and then very, very runny, upset tummy. And we took him to the vet because we were worried and they, um, they looked at him and then they sent him home. But then the next day he was just lying there and it was just, it was just awful. It was just pouring out of him while he was lying down and he was just really not moving. So we took him back and they kept him for two days. They did a myriad of tests on him and um, they never really gave me a final account of what happened. They thought he may have eaten something. I thought it was provovirus because at that time there were six puppies that died that exact weekend downtown, but they said seniors don't really get it. Get it's mostly it. for puppies. Yeah, so. Pavo is absolutely something that puppies get. In fact, I lost a puppy to Pawo really? uh, many years ago. Yeah. yeah, and he had exactly the same symptoms. With our, if you read up the symptoms, yeah. that's exactly what he had. But So they never really gave me an answer. And then part of that, he suddenly got Cushing's disease, which is just drinking, drinking, drinking nonstop, and then uncontrollable peeing. So he had no control of his bladder. So And that was a huge problem until I found... <laughs> <laughs> in HV. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did find us. <laughs> yeah, so with um, sometimes when you look at symptoms on the internet, then we um, go, oh, that could possibly be the thing. I think it's always advisable for our pet parents not to uh, go with what you read on online because sometimes what's um, symptoms can be very similar for a lot of different ailments in our pets so that's just something to keep in mind guys when you've got a sick pet or having a situation like jackie did is to always get to a wet and get diagnosed and you know hopefully get to the bottom of what's going on yeah okay. so <clears throat> um so when you decided to switch to nhv supplements um, tell us what you thought about that and how that worked out for you. Um, it um, um, so it worked out really well. We were very th also I started make cooking his own food, which I think helped a lot. I stopped buying um, the vet thought it might have been part of his problem was um, um, dehydrated food. Like so, we switched to cooked home cooked food and the NHV products. And I was very diligent about giving the correct dose. And then um, I did go away for a week and it worked pretty quickly actually. It worked, it took maybe just a couple of weeks and then it was like a miracle, it just totally stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, but then when I went away and I left him with a friend <clears throat> and I did give him the, I did give them the dosage, but. I think they maybe weren't as diligent as I was and I think it was getting low in the bottle and and just about straight away as soon as I think they didn't give it to him and it, st it started again. He started drinking again and peeing again but as soon as I started it's back to normal. Yeah. So it really works. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad <laughs> it works for, for Robbie. Um, so what Robbie's on is uh, Super Glen and ES Clear. Um, and then the diet that Jackie's talking about, the home cooked diet, Dr. Amanda here did a formulation that was specific for Robbie, uh, considering that he does have Cushing's and stuff like that. And um, Jackie has been really good at spending her time now cooking for Robbie. <laughs> yes. Um, but Scottish Terriers, as a breed, are known to have certain health issues. I mean, some of the more common things is what they call that Scottish cramp, where, yeah. you know, when they go for their walk, they get that. But the other thing is also Cushing's. Um, and I think we've also seen quite a bit of cancer coming up on Scotties. I think we in fact have a few that uh, Scotties out there that are, have got both Cushing's and cancer, which is really quite sad but the NHV supplements are really beneficial as you can see from what Jackie is telling you with helping with Cushing's the one thing I will say with Cushing's is that the home the 
the hormone that's getting released into the body is um, is different for each dog. So even though we may have a set dosage that we recommend, sometimes you have to work with it. So with Ravi's case, when Jackie told me she wasn't seeing that much of a difference, I said, up the dosage, double it. And within a, a few, I think a week after, Jackie started seeing a bit more of a difference on that. So with Cushing's, if you do have a dog out there that's dealing with it, and you decide to go on the supplements, then um, do come to us and let us know, and one of our amazing pet experts can uh, help you out with adjusting dosage and stuff like that. Yeah, when we were reaching out to our um, pet parents, just announcing that um, Robbie's gonna be with us, so a lot of them were curious, and a lot of them have pets that are fighting Cushing, so. Right. Uh, there was one concern about skin and coat condition. So I wonder, I mean, I can see that Robbie's sitting here with like a knock on wood, <laughs> a beautiful coat, but is it something that you experience as well as you think that his skin gets dry or? No, not at no. all. He's had, he's got, yeah, his coat has just been fine. Right. So you did not see any no dry effect, skin. effect on his coat when no. he was diagnosed with? No. With Cushing? Um, I don't think so. It's, yeah, no, he hasn't had, because sometimes they get the uh, sort of a dandruff effect, a dry skin, yeah. and he hasn't had anything like that. He's been, he doesn't scratch, he's not itchy, he's perfectly fine. Right. But Robbie did have, when, you, he, when he was first diagnosed, if I recall, he did have that little bit of a pot belly. Oh, because uh, that, look, yeah, right? that Which is, is a, a symptom when oh. they have the swollen, um, extended, they have the an tummy. extended tummy. Yes. And that's when the vet actually diagnosed him because of the extended tummy. And that has gone down. Yes. Yeah. So we're, we're so happy to see yeah. that that's getting better and he's eating well. Um, yes. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's really important to just watch for the signs and symptoms. Sometimes when you get up, they well, they wake you up and want to go for a pee. You go, okay, what's wrong with them? But always remember that those type of symptoms are because there's something going on internally. And we just think, oh, maybe, you know, our pet had a little too much water that evening. That's what it is. But if you see a pattern occurring, then I, I would strongly advise that you go get him checked here. Right. Checked, right? So I think that um, it would also be very, very symptomatic. So which is why we see so many pets with Cushing's, but some will come to us and we will have to recommend things like all clear ointment. Yeah. And we will have to recommend uh, Stimmune because they will get these ear infections as well. Yeah. And then there will be others who are not seeing those symptoms mm -hmm. like uh, Robbie. Yeah. Um, but Robbie so did have elevated liver enzymes yeah. as right. well. Right. Yeah. So he's, that's why we got him on the milk thistle uh, because when um, a dog has cushions and they're not functioning properly, it's a common uh, thing where the liver takes yeah. 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 definitely. So yeah, I guess what we want to say to everyone is that it's really different from pet to pet. There's no set rule for helping a pet with Cushing's. It's really important that once you have the diagnosis from your vet, just reach out to us so that we can help give you a customized solution. Um, and uh, I think, Patra, you have also dealt with Cushing oh, so closely. Yes. Yeah, it's it's something that's very close to my heart, my first dog lady. Um, I'm sure some of you must have read up about her on our blog and stuff like that. She did live to be 20. She was a rescue from Sri Lanka and she was a little beagle um, who did have Cushing's. And, you know, when she first started peeing too, I thought, what the heck's going on with her? And it's when I got to the vet and had the diagnosis that I realized, well, we had to do something. And again, with her, it was the super gland. And as she, because she lived so long and as she got older, I had to keep upping the dosage for her. Um, because the body continues, continues to fight. Yeah. 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 There is a fun question here for you. <laughs> Someone wants to know if um, uh, Robbie is named after Robbie Burns. He definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, well, 
Well, we lived in Scotland, as I said, for a few years, and uh, we loved Scotland. And when we left, we had a cat terrier, actually, which was a bit of a, um, I don't know, cat terriers definitely have a mind of their own. <laughs> so we decided we wanted another Scottish dog. And, um, and we, just, uh, we just thought that we'd like to name him, because we got our cat terrier in Scotland, but when we came here, we lost the cat terrier. So we got it with Robbie, and we thought we'd name him after. Robbie, Robbie Burns. Burns. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy, Robbie. You have a lot to live up to. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. Now we, we know more about <laughs> Yeah, definitely this was an <laughs> interesting experience. I think we know Robbie better now. Yeah, um, we love seeing Robbie and having Robbie here. And, um, and we have um, quite a few people here with us and um, they're all chiming in with comments and questions. Um, we're going to be here for, um, I guess, a couple more minutes, just wrapping up now, guys. But you can continue sending us your questions and we're always here to answer them. Um, Jackie and Robbie are going to be with us for a little bit longer in case you have any other questions. Just send those in and we'll get you like a personal response from someone who's dealing with this firsthand um and yeah i guess so the floor is open for any questions any waves any kisses <laughs> <laughs> just while well, we've got everybody on so jackie you cook robbie's food yes do you find that to be very difficult or have you figured out how to do it super quick no it's really easy i just put throw everything in a pot and then um at the end i weigh because he has a certain amount of food that he has to have I just weigh it and I put it straight into Ziploc bags and then I put it straight in the freezer. So every day I take out the exact amount of food he has to have that day, defrost it and add the supplements in. Add the supplements in and that and actually when he sees I've got the supplements in a little tupperware in the fridge. When he sees them come out, he starts doing this little dance and jumping around and so excited. <laughs> I think he just wants the supplements, not even the food. <laughs> well, he's yeah. one of our big fans. Thank you, Robbie. He loves it, that's for sure. Because <laughs> actually a lot of medication I've tried in the past and they do not like it at all. No. Well, we made no. sure that we've tried um, to make the supplements really palatable yeah. and they're safe for long-term use. Um, yeah, and you're right, everything has to, because we use no additives or preservatives or anything like that, everything needs to go in the fridge. In the fridge, yeah. So. Can you tell us a little bit more about how much uh, grooming it takes to keep that cool mm. beard going? <laughs> His hair costs more than mine, that's all. I, <laughs> <laughs> I take him, um, he has a standing appointment once a month, and I just make sure he's always... Um, well groomed and his beard gets a bit long and and when he drinks he'll drink some water and then you'll see this trail of water going along <laughs> the house that has gotten in his beard but, yeah ah. no, yeah I don't, he's actually hyperallergenic and um he doesn't shed so he's um he's very easy to keep we just take him once a month to the groomer and that's that's all oh that's easy yeah not so much about Chaya. Well, Chaya sheds a lot, but she doesn't really need to go to the groomer. <laughs> no, That's we would like a little bit more fur on her. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess um, that is it, and we're going to wrap up. Well, thank you, Jackie. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to our mm -hmm. customers. and. Um, it was such a pleasure having you and Robbie here. So we have a question from someone who just joined us, um, just found out about us actually, okay. and has been with us for the live show. So um, this pet parent wants to know about a dog who has separation anxiety uh -huh. and wants to know if we should pick between matricom and less stress. Okay. Um, I would say because it is a dog, I would suggest the less stress. Um, it's a great formulation of herbs that work on the nervous system, uh, helps keep them calm. So try it and see how it works for you. Again, dosage you might have to play a little bit with, um, but it's a great product and I'm sure you'll see some amazing results with it. And we do have, sometimes we have pets who, dogs who have 
who are coming from severe anxiety or traumatic experiences. And in those cases, we sometimes even recommend taking both. Both products, yes. Absolutely, because sometimes it's just so, like, again, that's a release of a hormone that's happening into the body, the stress hormone. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little bit more, and it's much more better than using one of the pharmaceuticals out there. Uh, it's a little bit more gentler. Yeah, and safer for long term. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so um, we are here to answer any questions. Just send them to us as messages or just call us um, or just get on our website. We have an online chat that puts you through to an HV pet expert. Um, that is all of us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Super fun to be here again, and we'll see you next month. All right.